Hello everyone, it's Lawrence Sondak here and I'm back talking about video games. I say back. That's basically all I do, so I guess I'm, I'm doing it again. Today I got a preview for Immortal Phoenix Rising. Now when I first saw this at uh, the Ubisoft event, I kind of cynically thought this was just a way for them to make Assassin's Creed, but make it rated E for everyone, so that now the kids can play Assassin's Creed. It's actually not like that. Um, and if anyone looked at the preview footage, probably figured out that it's not exactly an Assassin's Creed kind of game, it's more of like a Breath of the Wild. Or more recently, a Genshin Impact, if you've been playing that. Uh, the interesting comparison there, Genshin Impact free to play, this one's not. But I think this one has some stuff going for it that should warrant your interest anyway. Given that the game had a more cartoonish quality, I kind of assumed that it would just be, you know, kid safe, but... Shockingly, there's a little more bite to it than that. Uh, there's a little more going on here. So here are the broad beats of the story. Essentially, there's a titan named Typhon. Hates the gods, he's coming to get him. Uh, you are Phoenix, a mortal who is destined to help for some reason. The story sort of laid out in this conversation between Zeus and Prometheus at the beginning of the game, and I gotta say, the animation and the engine look really, really good. Uh, it looks like a really, really good cartoon, but running on your computer or your console. You need my help. Typhon is free. This is kind of the future that I think we've been waiting for, and, and for me at least, I really enjoy uh, using graphics and tech to do something like this versus trying to look as photo real as possible or maybe showing ways that you can rip people's skulls off and amazing new detail. This is really wonderful and really vibrant and I really like the way it looks and animates. On top of that, there is this sort of like Statler and Waldorf vibe from the Muppets with Zeus and Prometheus because essentially Prometheus is basically laying out the narrative of the game as you're playing it so it almost has that like Prince of Persia Sands of Time flavor where they'll cut in with narration about what you're doing and sort of banter back and forth about what's going on in front of you. It's it's a really fun sort of tone and they actually do manage to hit a good amount of comedic value there. Uh, you're sick, Prometheus. Do not talk to me. There's also a fair bit of stoner humor, weirdly, in the game. You find this oracle and he's just kind of musing about socks or hot dogs or whatever. It kind of is like Adult Swim light, a little diet Adult yes. Swim there. Uh, I wasn't expecting it, and it was a pleasant surprise, and I think a little dash of humor can help uh, really maintain your interest and enjoyment in a game. So I'm really looking forward to seeing if that tone maintains over the course of the entire game. But the smoke here is something else. <laughs> so I wanted to lead with that because that was honestly the most surprising aspect for me, the story and tone of the whole game. It's fun. Uh, <laughs> and it plays well, too. So the, the combat is kind of the first thing that anyone notices, and, and that is mostly by the numbers. So if you played a recent beat-em-up or... An Assassin's Creed, really. You probably know what's going on here. It's a light and strong combo attack. There's a stamina system. Uh, you can do counters uh, that will stun an enemy, so you can dump all your DPS abilities. Uh, if you dodge at the right timing, you get a little slowdown. You know, it's by the numbers, but it works. This is this is sort of a combat system we've seen in a lot of games, and it's here again. Um, so there's not so much really that I could find that was unique about the combat. However, this is not really a game only about combat, if you if you consider the like Breath of the Wild or Genshin Impact comparisons. This game has platforming. Remember when you have to jump on platforms and then not fall off those platforms? Yeah, it's here, it's great. So the way the game is laid out, essentially, you find these pits that go into this extra-dimensional realm, kind of like the shrines in Breath of the Wild, or maybe even the floodless sequences in Super Mario Sunshine, if you've been playing the remake of that. But in these areas, you get puzzles and platforming. Uh, the platforming mechanics are really good. It, it actually feels a bit like, this is a deep reference, but kind of like a Castlevania jump, where you jump and you kind of hang at max height for a bit before you drop. And you have a ton of air control, so you can kind of steer yourself in the air. It makes the 3D jumping feel really, really good. And, and, and on, a, on a further note, like the animations are all super bouncy and squishy. It really helps contribute to this feeling of just being lighthearted, goofy, and fun. I really, really like it. And like I said, there's puzzles, you know, there's blocks, you push them around, there's balls, you roll them around. Gotta put the blocks on plates. There's like weight puzzles and stuff like that. You know, I play the beginning of the game, so all the puzzles are pretty direct, but uh, it's still fun, you know? It's still fun to go into a, uh, a dungeon and not just have to slaughter your way through 55 skeleton warriors. It's so nice to just have some puzzles where you gotta jump right or put a block in the right spot. It's good for variety, you know, and I feel like a lot, of, a lot of big adventure games have been missing that variety lately. It's just a laundry list of side quests that all ultimately amount to the same activity. So I'm really excited that Immortal Phoenix Rising kind of wraps all that up in a package. And, you know, it's got the big open world with a lot of icons and things like that. But I was still really impressed with, with the humor of the game, with the tone of it, and, uh, and the gameplay itself. I even got to skip forward and do a pretty hard boss fight later with this giant bird. Uh, you know, they, they dumped a lot of progression on me so that I could uh, kind of roll through that fight, but it was still really fun. 
Initially, I was interested in Immortal just because it was a, a new IP, and, and again, cynically, I thought it was just an adaptation of an existing IP. But I'm really, really glad this sort of Breath of the Wild game type is, is getting more attention. It was really good back when it came out. And now I'm really glad that other developers are being like, oh, we could do that. Because you can! You can, and it's still good. So, good on you. Uh, I'm excited to play it, and I really hope that uh, the entire game is as good as the first, you know, hour was. So, thank you for watching. That's the preview for today. And I'll catch you next time. That's a weird sign-off. That's good enough.